All right, hello everybody. Welcome back. This is Carl again. Today I'm going to talk about my um, uh, do-it-yourself Arduino dosing pumps uh, for my aquarium. So, uh, real quick, just kind of a quick overview. Um, I have two peristaltic pumps that I bought off eBay, uh, about twelve dollars a piece, um, delivered. So I have two of those. I have a Hammond uh, one five nine zero uh, plastic enclosure. I have an Arduino um, compatible clone underneath here. That's this uh, kind of tan board, and that's a board I etched myself. Uh, it just has an Atmega 328 chip uh, capacitor, um, and it actually is set up for Arduino um, compatible shields. Uh, this is an Arduino um, shield from Radio Shack. Now I cut this one down so that it fits in the box, and I also reused this. It was used on another project. And then instead of just throwing it away, I kept it. Um, on here, this is a TO220 uh, 5-volt regulator. And these are two in-channel MOSFETs um, that are actually F1010E. And that's actually what is driving the um, peristoctic pumps. Uh, any MOSFET will work as long as it can handle, uh, you know, I'd say a half an amp and then, you know, over 12 volts. Um, these pump run these those pumps run at about 12 volts about 0.23 amps so uh, uh, these are just ones that I had in my junk drawer laying around so real real quick on the circuit here um, I have here is um, where I bring 12 volts in from a 2.1 millimeter jack um, this switch here is for Turn in the backlight on and off on the LCD. Power comes in on the red wires from 12 volts and powers the two peristoptic pumps. Also brings power into the regulator. The regulator then produces 5 volts out through the shield to the Arduino. I have a uh, 1307 chip, a real time clock. Um, this is just a chip I had, I kind of threw together on my own perf board. Nothing high tech about it has uh, the pull up resistors on the SCL and SDA, the data lines, and then the backup and then a clock. Uh, this provides real time clock functionality for the Arduino to pump um, to produce the voltage at one specific time, or excuse me, not the voltage, but to turn the pumps on at a specific time. Uh, the Arduino, on the digital pins out, I use 9 and 10, they're PWM pins, they go through to 1K resistor uh, to the MOSFET turns that on which produces ground and ground comes out of the MOSFET and runs the pump. Now I do an analog write feature so I can actually PWM the pins um, if you wanted. I'm doing PWM at 255 and I'll show you the sketch. I'll go ahead and attach a copy of that into the uh, notes below. And uh, so that's pretty much it. Now uh, of course with a full Arduino I do have plenty of room to run an LCD um, directly off the pins, but when I did that, every time the motors would come on, I would get like garbage data across the LCD screen. And I'm not really sure why. Sometimes with the motors mess it up. So I actually have this uh, port expander chip, which is a MCP two three zero zero eight, and I'm using a uh, Lady Ada's code from Eighty Fruit, and uh, I actually made this little board. And what happens is this communicates via the I squared C bus two on A four and A five, and actually. Um, produces LCD onto this screen here. So um, the screen might not be necessary, just want a handy feature. And the way I have it programmed is it shows uh, just two. This is a two by sixteen. So the top one's for the first pump, the bottom one's for the second pump, and then I have um, how many times it's pumped, how many times it's turned on, uh, the date that it last turned on, and the time that it last turned on. Um, that way, just so at a quick glance, I can press the button, it'll turn the light on, I can glance at the screen, and that'll tell me. Um, I, you know, instead of leaving the LCD light on all the time, uh, I'm not really quite sure how hot this regulator is going to get, so I did put a little heat sink on it, but I don't want the LCD be on and it'll be, you know, in the cabin in my fish tank and just have an LCD light on and nobody's ever going to look at it. So that's one thing I did. I went ahead and put a little switch in there. So, um, I thought at first this box was going to be too big, but, you know, one thing that you can never take for granted is wire size. 
wires always seem to take up a lot of room. Um, the other thing that I really was trying to do originally with this box is I wanted to get three pumps. Um, right now I only have two. I really only have a need for one. So I went ahead and just got another one so I'd have it. Um, but I, there's no way you could get a third pump in this box. Uh, I mean, you can see here, it's pretty tight. There's no way I could have got an Arduino board in there with uh, a third pump. So if you need more pumps, um, perhaps the solution might be in the future if I need another pump. Um, I might just get another one of these boxes and then just set them one on top of uh, each other. And then that way what I'd have is I could just drill a hole from this box, from this box here to the box below, and then just run uh, wires down, maybe have um, like a small little board with just two of the uh, MOS, the uh, transistors here. And then what would happen is I would just run basically 12 volts down and then the ground connection down from um, this board and then just do it that way so that might be an option as well in the future I could just stick two of these boxes on top of each other and that way I can use the same Arduino because I have plenty of pins left there's plenty of PWM pins so it'd be kind of overkill to have another Arduino running it um, but anyhow I'll leave that up to you so I'll put this little board on and let me put all this together and show you what it looks like Okay, so I went ahead and got it closed up. Um, one thing that um, I did have some problems with and that, you know, I kind of regret I did. Um, I did really mount this uh, LCD. I should have offset a little bit because when you stick that board in, kind of is tight. So originally, if you remember, I had the board down here. And what I did was just flip the display around so that it'll fit in the case nicely without jamming it together. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in here. I'm just... 12 volts uh, from my uh, wall supply and uh, it'll run through the boot up screen and I'll show you some of the features. Alright, so I think I can get you a good shot from this screen. So I'll plug it in. It says uh, dose and pump by me, Squiggy. Uh, this is Rev 2 and Rev 1 was simply um, uh, LCD connected the standard way, the 2, 3, 4, 5, and 11, and 12 to the digital pins, and Rev2 uses the port expander. And I'll put links to both codes uh, down below. Um, if I push the button, it will uh, turn the light on, and it'll keep it on, and if I push the button, it'll go out. So I push the button, there it is, and you can see it says 1. C is for counting, and it has run 0 times. The D is for the date, and that would be month slash um, date. And then T is for time, and it would put the time. And then it's the same for the second pump. So um, one thing I don't have um, in the code is any way to change the program of, of the specific time. Um, I just never gotten that kind of deep into the EPOM programming. Um, so if you wanted to change the date and time of the pump, you would actually have to go in and change the firmware in the Arduino. Right now, one of the pumps is, come to, is set to come on every day at um, 10 o'clock in the evening, and the other pump is 6 o'clock in the morning. Um, so in the code, the way I have it actually broken down is the very top of the code is all the user inputs that you should change, and that's the specific hours, minutes, and seconds. And um, The reason why I did hours, minutes, and seconds is I want to make sure they're only ones once a day and not twice, because technically... Um, 7 o'clock comes once or twice a day. Um, you have a and a p.m. The other thing it did is use the military time. So it actually looks for specific uh, military time hours. So, for example, I wanted to run at 10 o'clock. So every night at 22.00 and 00, 00 seconds it actually runs. The other reason why I do the seconds is if I wanted it to come on at 10 o'clock and... Um, at, 20, at let's say 10 o'clock exactly, then technically at 10 o'clock and 00, 00 seconds it'll come on run. Um, I have the length set for 8 seconds, and then after the 8 seconds, it's still 10 o'clock at 00, zero uh, 10 o'clock, so 2200, zero zero, and it's going to run again. And so it would actually run once every 10 seconds until the minute has elapsed. So I won't, only want it to run one time, so that's how I took care of that. Um, and so then again, if I uh, push the button here, uh, the display actually goes out. Uh, so, yeah, anyhow, um, um, running this way at, let's see, let me look at my supply here. At 12 volts, I'm using uh, 200 milliamps with the LCD off. 
and with the LCD on, it's about 400 milliamps. It's uh, 0 0.04. So, anyhow, I'm just trying to cut some of that power consumption, and uh, that's why I use the switch. Okay, so hopefully you guys like this. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask them down below in the comment section, um, and I'll see what I can do to help you. All right, so I'm just going to follow up here. I... Um, I've done some more testing and I'm um, finally ready to put this on to the aquarium. Just a couple notes, um, I might have mentioned it before. Um, be careful mounting the LCD screen. I actually had to, originally it was mounted like this and now I have to flip it this way for it to fit in there correctly. Um, also, if you're buying peristock these peristoctic pumps on eBay, um, try to find the ones with the connectors. This tubing is super thin, it's uh, probably like uh, 16th or an H. Uh, eighth inside diameter. Let's see if you can uh, get a little better shot of that. It is really tiny, and um, it's been kind of hard to find the tube to get it to work. Um, I was able to kind of make these connectors work. These are just quarter inch um, um, hose fittings from just an aquarium store, and um, in fact, this one used to have an air stone on and an air stone break apart. So I was able to kind of get this to uh, fit in there. It's tight fit but I was able to get it and um, yeah I was able to work also picked up some of this um, eighth inch uh, rigid airline tubing uh, so that I can stick that down into the product so that it'll dose it out um, so I'm just going to go ahead and plug it in here um, so there's actually two revisions of my code the first code uh, for a revision will have the traditional LCD display and that's where you wired into 2345 and then 11 and 12 and then this one uses the uh, MCP 23008, which is the port expander chip, and um, uh, it's based off Lady Ada's code over there at Adafruit. So uh, you can pick up those parts at Adafruit uh, to do that. And what I like about this particular LCD is that it makes it two wire. It uses the IC square bus on A4 and A5, uh, so that's kind of convenient. Um, I have one uh, normally uh, open push button. If you push it. Um, once and release it, it'll turn the light on. Um, as you can see, the LCD lights on is on now. If I push it, it'll turn it off. And then uh, if I push it, it'll also turn it on. If I push and hold for four seconds, it'll then run the pumps in what I call priming mode. And that's where it'll run the pumps for four seconds to help prime the product. Um, once you get it primed through the lines, you won't need to do that again. Um, but that's just something that I have in there for now. I guess I could stick another button in there to do that, but um, I like the one button idea. Um, so that, yeah, that's it. So uh, I'll demonstrate now. If you push and hold, it'll run the pumps. So we'll push it, we'll hold it. You see it turns the light on. And then after four seconds of holding it, it'll run uh, both pumps. And um, yeah, so that's it. So I don't know. Hopefully you guys like it. And um, uh, like I said, the code will be available. If you're looking to adjust any of the code parameters, oh, I also did um, do some experiments. For about every one second that this pump runs, it runs about one mL. So that's actually perfect, perfect for me because I'm going to dose um, some nitrate and phosphate remover, and I want to dose one milliliter per day. So I have this pump to come on at 10 o'clock at night, and this pump to come on at 6 o'clock in the morning. And I think I'm going to dose for now. I'm going to dose. Um, uh, 1 ml of the, the nitrate and phosphate remover and then 1 ml of calcium try to see if I can't get my coralline allergy to grow so um, I'm going to have to keep an eye because I'm assuming as soon as I start dosing the calcium my alkalinity is going to need to be dosed so um, you know looking back I'm kind of glad I did the two pumps now um, I did notice that uh, it's very common to have master and slaves for these dosing pumps so I think what I'll probably do is get two more dosing pumps, maybe even three more. I'll get another one of these boxes and then I'll just set them right on top of each other and then what that'll do is that'll give me my um, master and slave and then I'll just run a wire from here down to um, um, from here down into those other pumps and just do it that way. Um, probably what I'll do is make a small little board that has these uh, MOSFETs on it um, so all I need to do is bring 12 volts power and then uh, 12 volts ground and then the Arduino um, uh, control out. So I'll just run three wires from this box down. And so yeah. Okay, this will be the final uh, part here of this video about the dosing pumps. A um, couple things I'm just going to follow up on here. It's actually been a couple, about a week later now. 
Um, I have had to do some pump on my aquarium with no fault flaws. Um, this is the schematic that I used. So this represents the peristaltic pump. Uh, this is the uh, in-channel MOSFET, the F1010E. So you bring 12 volts into the motor. The ground from the motor connects down through the um, pin on uh, the F101E. There is a, um, a 1K resistor between the auto Arduino digital pin and the gate. Uh, this is the drain over here, and then this is the source. Uh, this is a 1N4 zero, zero 4 diode. There also is a body diode in the um, in-channel MOSFET, but I put another one in there between the source and the drain and this configuration for that motor. Um, here is the representation. This is the F101E. It's the gate drain source. And then this is the 7805, the TO220 in ground and out. And then... You bring 12 volts in there, you get 5 volts out to your Arduino from the 7805. Um, this is Sammy. I use digital pin 9 for the right pump, digital pin 10 for the left, and, and A0 for the button. And then this is just a little representation of how I had it mounted up. So uh, that talks about kind of the schematic. The other thing I, I mentioned was this um, rigid airline tube in here. All right, so this is actually um, eighth inch. Um, rigid airline tube and I got this from the fish store quarter inch airline fits perfect on the outside of this and the reason why I use this is so that it can go down into the product and so let me just kind of pan out here I found um, I had a couple of these bottles because of my uh, compulsive hoarding I guess and um, I use this in my freshwater system and I just decided to keep them and how they usually come is that they have this little plug in it and you know you can drip in um, this is for a dechlorinator anyhow what I found was you could take a drill bit and just ream this out enough that this rigid tubing will actually fit down into here um, this container actually works perfect it has a chart that you can see how much product you have so I put my nitrate and phosphate remover in I stick this cap back on it has this cap if I need to seal up the product, if I maybe don't need to dose it anymore. And then I stick the rigid airline tubing um, down into the product container. And then I hook this up to my tubing, which goes to um, quarter-inch airline, which then runs to my dosing pump. Okay, the other thing I found out was I went to Lowe's, and I got one of these little cheap dollar spray bottles. And it actually comes with this piece of plastic tube and it's semi-rigid and this fits perfectly inside of those peristaltic um, dosing pumps so what I did was I cut it in half I bought two of these bottles I cut them in half I put one end on the peristaltic pump and the other end on the peristaltic pump and then I could use quarter inch airline tubing to connect them together and then so I ended up connecting uh, this eighth inch rigid um, with quarter inch airline to this one with quarter inch airline and it fits perfect so that was my solution for that so it was really economical again 99 cents for one of these I'm sure you can get it at Lowe's or um, Home Depot as well <coughs> and um, yeah so that was my idea for this the other thing you could do is um, you know you could just drill a hole into the top and then just insert this down if you didn't have one of these bottles let's say and that would be you know the same usefulness but I really like how you can see the scale so just at a glance when I open my cabinet I can look and see where my product level is and it's delineated so I know you know let's say every week it should only go down one notch and so I can just kind of keep an eye on make sure I'm dosing the right amount all right well that'll conclude the video um, like I said again the codes available any questions Ask down below and good luck to you.